Well, I've been waiting to do this one, and I imagine there are those of you that couldn't wait for me to talk about King of the Ring 1994. That's right, this June King of the Ring review series plows ahead. How much does that guy weigh? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, well make sure you check out everything in this King of the Ring review series. There's going to be a total of 10 of them. So far as the time of this recording, I've recorded the King of the Ring 93 review, which was up already on the channel. Let's go ahead though and talk about King of the Ring 1994 from Baltimore, Maryland. Now what I will never understand for the life of me is, yes, I get that you're in Baltimore. And and I get that Art Donovan was a real character, a real personality in the world of football and all of that. But I will never understand is what the thought process and the logic was of not just having him commentate on one match or commentate on two matches. Somebody signed off on having Art Donovan do commentary with JR <laughs> and the Macho Man the entire night. Oh my God. When you think about runs at commentary and memorable moments and memorable work, there are a few from a commentary standpoint that can touch what Art Donovan did, the masterpiece that he put up at the King of the Ring 1994. And I know for years, almost three decades now, this has been crapped on and lampooned and shit all over. And I certainly understand it. You're just sitting there saying to yourself, why the hell is this old fart doing commentary with JR and the Macho Man? And what the hell is he talking about? Why did they send him out there? And clearly they didn't wise him up to everything anything. He didn't know everything that was going on. He didn't know anything that was fucking going on. Why the hell did they put him in this spot? And then they persisted and let him stay out there the rest of the goddamn night. <laughs> and I know people like to talk about it. We like to have our fun about it. And it's all botchamania stuff. And who's that guy? How much does that guy weigh? But damn it all, I'm here to defend Art Donovan in his commentary at King of the Ring 1994. You wish you got commentary like this today. You wish you got this level of insight. You wish you got somebody that helped contribute to the storytelling dynamics of what was going on in the ring and on the television screen. You wish you had you a few more Art Donovans. I promise you. When you really think about it, sure, like there wasn't a lot of substance there. Sure, it was this and sure it was that. But in the grand scheme of things, almost three decades later, you remember this. Nobody got hurt. Nobody was ruined. So how is this bad? Tis better to be remembered for something than, be, than to be forgotten for everything. We still remember this. There are two things you remember this King of the Ring 94 <laughs> show for. It's the fucking Art Donovan commentary and the main event. Oh, God. We'll get to that. But Art Donovan, you know, when he's asking, like, who this guy is, and he looks like a badass, like, there's something almost, like, organic and pure with his reactions, like you took a casual fan and put him into this spot, and Art Donovan acted like a casual fan would. So when he's asking about how much does this guy weigh, and is he a champion, or is he this, or is he that, yeah, certainly you could see where, like, the Macho Man and JR, God bless them in this spot, they did the damn best that they could, and they tried to humor him, and they tried to get along, and they tried to, to not completely and totally ignore him. But it actually forced him at times to go back and tell more of the story. Like the one, two, three kid, they're talking about Diesel. Who's that with the big guy? Is he the number two? Like Shawn Michaels. <laughs> I mean, it made them actually slow down and tell a little bit more of the story about who the hell these guys were. And you say, that probably wasn't necessary for an audience that was buying the pay-per-view. Maybe, maybe not. 
But what was the fucking harm here? You have people that do commentary for years that you remember their cringeworthy shit, but you don't ever remember it to this level and this degree. Like what Art Donovan did on that night in Baltimore in June of 1994 is legendary, is iconic, is immortal, will truly live forever in wrestling annals. So going back and watching it and hearing him on commentary, that was a fucking blast in my humble opinion. But again, that's just me. I'm sure I'm in the minority here. And as always, I'm used to being the minority here when it comes to wrestling. So anyways, let's move on from the greatness that was Art Donovan on commentary for the 1994 King of the Ring. And let's talk about this tournament. You had four quarterfinal matches. Bam Bam Bigelow versus Razor Ramon was solid. IRS versus Mabel. You know, I could talk about IRS versus Mabel. Or I could tell you a quick story about Men on a Mission. Years back, I was on a trip. Uh, no, I tell you exactly where the hell I was. It was back in 2002, so I was like 21 years old, uh, and I had went to Bourbon A uh, for the Chicago Bears training camp that year, and it was in a Holiday Inn hotel down at the pool, and I see this big fat dude, probably 300-ish plus pounds, kind of short, but certainly portly, and he's like standing there, and I said, I know, I know that dude. I recognize that dude from somewhere. And I struck up a conversation with him and we started talking. I was asking him why he was in town. I don't fucking remember because that detail is not important. I was telling him that I was in town for training camp. And I'm like, I know you from somewhere. And you know, sometimes you don't recognize people in like normal civvies or street clothes. Or in this case, a half naked 300 plus pound black man is standing in the pool when you're there with your girlfriend. And she was relatively not amused. I was just talking to this random dude. But you know what? Fuck her. Fuck her. That's why. I fucked her in the pool later that night anyways. And he, he goes, yeah. You ever watch WWE? I said, fucking men on a mission. And it was fucking Oscar. That is the most irrelevant story that you're ever going to hear here. But it's a story for me. All right, damn it. What's that got to do with the show? Nothing. And it doesn't fucking matter. Uh, Tatanka and Owen Hart. Owen Hart wins. The one, two, three kid beat a mid card piece of crap. And that is all that we are going to talk about here. That is all that we're going to talk about. What I liked about this was in the King of the Ring 94. One cool thing was when Razor would come out, they were chanting one, two, three, one, two, three. Because this is right after the one, two, three kid had pinned him on Monday Night Raw. Another thing going back to 94, similar to 93, how Hulk Hogan versus Yokozuna for the WF, WF, WWF Championship was in the middle of the card. So was Diesel versus Bret Hart for the WWF Championship here. Really weird. It came after, it came before a tag team title match, both of the semifinal King of the Ring tournament matches, and that ungodly main event. It was a pretty good match between Diesel and Bret Hart. I always thought. Diesel and Bret Hart could have some really good matches. Like, I thought they worked really well off of each other. And, you know, you could always credit, hey, that's all Bret Hart and this and this. You know, obviously Bret Hart was more skilled as a pure technical wrestler and in terms of his execution and so forth. But Kevin Nash had to be able to do something fucking right. And it was around this time you were really starting to understand that, you know, as much as they were trying to pump up Shawn Michaels at one point in time, that it was Diesel that was going to be that kind of next dude, that Diesel was going to be the bigger deal. And you could really start to see that here. Where, is that his second? <laughs> Donovan is Shawn Michaels' is second. Yes, yes, he was his second. Um, but good match. You know, they had the dynamic of Shawn Michaels is in the corner here, but Neidhart, Jim the Anvil Neidhart, where Brett was talking about he was going to have somebody from his family in the corner was out there to make sure to protect Brett. Although the storytelling dynamics were great here because after the match, Neidhart was gone and then Brett got beat up and he goes looking for Neidhart and you find out later on what it was all about. It was really, really well done. In the semifinal matches, you had the Rocket Owen Hart beat the one, two, three kid and uh, Razor Ramon defeat IRS. It looks like a business match. Art Donovan was fucking amazing this night. Can't believe people shit on this. Uh, the WWF Tag Team Championship Yokozuna and Crush taking on the Head Shrinkers. Just kind of odd to see Yoko go from 
being the dude that a year before was winning the world championship back from Hogan and a couple of months before had just dropped the strap to Brett at WrestleMania 10 and here he is wrestling in a tag team match. Always kind of strange to me. It's also strange to go back and see the head shrinkers and see Rikishi like that. Just, it is. Uh, your King of the Ring tournament final was a, a really good match between Razor Ramon and the Rocket Owen Hart. Owen Hart being victorious, and I always think of 1994, frankly, in the WWF. I know Brett won the title from Yoko at Mania, but I always think about it as the year of Owen. I really do. I really, really do. But this is a good match, and then you got the whole big reveal of Jim the Anvil, Neidhart's out there with Owen Hart as Owen Hart's going through the coronation and everything. And it's like, they start piecing it together and like, hey, wait a second. Did he make sure that Brett won so that way he was ready for Owen? Like, that type of layered, intricate storytelling we just don't get from WWE anymore. Um, I wish we could take the main event and throw it into the story dumpster heap of it's never fucking happened. Now... You could look at the talent and you could say Roddy Roddy Piper versus Jerry the King Waller. You should be able to construct a main event worthy storyline and a main event worthy match out of this program. And I would agree. I would absolutely positively agree. Although you start to think about it, you take a step back a little bit and you say like stylistically from a wrestling standpoint, seems kind of like an odd fit. You look at it from a personality standpoint and you feel like in some ways it's two guys playing a little too close to one side. Like, obviously Piper was clearly the baby face here and Lawler was clearly the heel. But once it got to the actual match, like it was missing. It didn't work. You know, sure, you got to the end and you're sitting there and you're saying um, Piper gets the win and the crowd pops. I always found it really ironic here that this was the time they were talking about the new generation, out with the old and in with the new. And yet Diesel versus Bret Hart for your most important title was buried in the middle of the fucking show. Yoko Zuna, who just two months before had main evented, actually, let me correct that, he both main evented and kind of like mid-card main evented, wrestled two world title matches on the same damn WrestleMania show, one of the truly great performances of WrestleMania history, in my humble opinion. Now he's working fucking tag team. And you've got Roddy Roddy Piper versus Jerry the King Lawler as your damn main event. How, what the hell is new generation about that? Hey, remember the... <laughs> oh, it was so bad. Like, when you really think about it, there's only a couple of things that King of the Ring 94 is really remembered for. It's, it's really three things. One, Art Donovan's majestic commentary to the rocket Owen Hart winning King of the Ring here at least he didn't have to kick Brett's leg out from under his leg <laughs> I miss Owen and Owen was better than Brett you hear me you can debate about it in the comments who is brighter better Brett or Owen and the answer is Owen although 9017 Canada Brett Makes it a little more interesting. But body of work of career? Give me Owen Hart all day. But then this show is also remembered for the absolutely atrocious fucking dumpster fire main event that was Roddy Roddy Piper versus Jerry the King Lawler. This was really, really bad. <laughs> and you can see here at this point in time, from the decision to have Art Donovan randomly do fucking commentary for the entire show to mid-carding your world championship featuring two of your young new generation lions that are supposed to be carrying your duck company for the next several years to you're sitting there and taking a guy from Memphis that the WWF fans aren't all that familiar with against a guy that hadn't been around because he'd been doing movies and everything fucking else like just really fucking weird and a reminder at the time of how WWF was losing its grip a little bit and WWF was going to have more challenges and more problems because this certainly was not a very good show. I'm sorry, as I go back and watch it, getting to see Owen Hart three times on the show, highlight for me. Art Donovan's masterpiece on commentary throughout the night, mwah, rest in peace, sir, certainly a highlight to me. But pretty much everything else about this show, you can absolutely positively skip because it was pretty bad.